Today I'm going to be explaining why you need to let your kids struggle. So my wife has a cousin who works at Google. She's graduated um, in child care, early child development. And one of the earlier times she came over, she came over and she noticed Ellie does a really good job holding the pen, maybe a little bit behind the language, but that's also because we taught her sign language. So we were expecting her to be a little bit behind in that area anyway. But what she had noticed was when Ellie's holding the pen, it was like this. Like this is a fairly advanced way to hold a pen apparently for a toddler. And she was very impressed. And one of the ways we had helped instigate that was by letting her practice. Just we'd let her give her a huge sheet of paper and practice holding a pen. And to us, that seems fairly obvious, right? But to continue this skill over other areas where, for example, Ellie was able to use a spoon and fork a lot earlier than other kids was the way we established that was we let her just practice. And by that, I mean, we had her sit in a high chair and we just gave her a spoon and we'd try and make her, uh, we try and let her feed herself and we try and instigate with our guardian, with everyone else who watches Ellie and Amelia to let them struggle. Because as, as a parent, obviously you have the general advice of like, oh, you need to keep, teach your kid everything. And the, they're going to pick up all this stuff from you. But it's, it's almost, it's very interesting to me how much you have to program into your kid. For example, there's Ellie the first time she had gotten a lollipop. She took it, she took the lollipop and just stuck it against her teeth like that because she didn't have the mental programming to open her mouth and put her mouth around the lollipop to get the sugar. So it took her a few tries to figure that out and then she didn't and clicked. But that only happened through repetition. So in this case with the spoon, if you always if you're concerned about the mess and you're always just taking the spoon and feeding your kid, that's time where your kid could be developing the skill to hold the spoon and properly feed themselves. That is going to prolonging the time they're going to be able to actually do that. So my advice to other parents, uh, just having seen the results with my kid and I'm watching it unfold also in Amelia is let your kid struggle, whether that's holding a spoon, whether that's trying to walk up and down stairs, obviously supervise your kid as you're trying to walk up and down stairs. But you're going to see as they hold things or as they try and walk or try and climb, you're going to see the, the mental picture kind of mapping in their head and they're trying to get used to their body. And when they're doing this, my suggestion is also not to talk to them at the same time. Let them focus fully on what's happening. Let them fo focus fully on trying to hold the spoon. Let them focus fully on trying to walk up and down the stairs or in Amelia's case, climb up and down the ladder. And just let them give them time to be in that flow state in their own body to finally get the mental mapping and physical mapping down into their hands and their feet, um, because that's the only way to develop it. There's no fast way to do that. There's no there's no toy you can buy that's going to speed that up. It's just repetition, and that's how we learn as adults, right? We just try and try, and we're just very more we're more cognizant about how we do it. But as a kid, you have to do it at a very micro level for small things like holding a spoon holding a pen, going up and down stairs, that kind of thing. So for your parent who are, who are like, watch your kid, and if it looks like they're trying to do it, let them try and just keep letting them try. Because if you keep doing it for them, they're not going to learn. That's it for today, guys. See you tomorrow.